Hello everyone, this is Jake from Backwater and what I want to do today is a little side-by-side -side comparison of a backwater frame to an import kit. Um, there's a couple of reasons I wanted to make this video. Uh, the first reason is that you know people see these two you know on the internet and they think oh there's not too much of a difference but uh, upon any you know uh, pulling these apart and picking it apart, there's actually a very big difference in dependability and quality. The other reason is, is I'm hoping to save some people some money because what happens is this kit is, yes, about half of what we sell the backwater kit for, but it's going to cost you a lot more money. And I have a lot of people, customers that call shortly after buying one of these saying they wish they would have just bought, you know, a USA made quality right away. Um, so, because what ends up happening is, and I'll pick these features apart, they end up needing to buy, you know, either a lot of parts and or just a whole new kit in order to, you know, get the dependability that you need if you're going to be out in the swamp trapping uh, or hunting or fishing. So I want to start with the most obvious difference between the two, which is in the shaft length. Uh, you see that this import kit has a much longer shaft. Uh, in the long tail world, the general rule of thumb is that when the engine sits higher off the water, you need a longer shaft to have the same shallow angle of entry into the water with your prop. Um, so this here particular long tail kit, you can see how much higher the engine's gonna sit even on the same height transom. So that's why they need such a long shaft. It's not gonna give them any more efficiency, it's just making up for the poor design of this transom mount. The reason that we like, you know, this compact shaft is you're going to save weight and it also makes a very big difference in ease of handling. So not only does the transom mount have the extra high pivot point, which, you know, creates the need for the longer shaft. There's also a couple other things that are flawed in the mount itself. Uh, one is over on this side here, it has a pin to lock the motor from, from turning. But the problem is, is this pin has a stop every 90 degrees. So it will actually lock in a position even when the motor is run position. So now you are stuck going straight forward. Uh, in theory, it should stay up, but it's a totally flawed design in that it has uh, a hole every 90 degrees to stop it. Uh, the backwater transom mount does swivel into the bolt for transportation. All of our frames do. Um, but we have it designed properly so the prop will stop both directions right before it comes into the bolt and will also lock in the center for transportation with your prop inside the bolt. Um, another thing that the backwater transom mount does, it's the Versa mount. It has stop pins on it, so you can adjust how far your prop drops into the water. Each adjustment with this pin is gonna change how far the prop drops into the water by five degrees. This is uh, unique to backwater, and it's a very important feature, which makes the motors a lot nicer to drive because when you get to your fishing or hunting spot, uh, the motor doesn't drop deep down in the water. Here, this has a stationary uh, stop pin on here. So if it's not right for your boat, well, you're stuck with that. So something that I haven't mentioned up to this point yet is that the backwater frame is made out of DOM material, drawn over mandrel, uh, tube steel, um, which is a very strong steel. Our handle is made out of 12 gauge, uh, inch and an eighth DOM. I mean, this is incredibly strong. Long tails do take some torque when you're stuck, that sort of thing. You might need to use this handle for some strong leverage. On um, this here import kit, it's built out of what to me looks even thinner than conduit steel. With the amount of length of the shaft and torque that's going to be on here, I believe that this handle is going to bend right in half. I can actually take here and it just flexed that simply. I literally just probably added, I don't know, 10 degrees of bend to it. I don't want to break it completely, 
because I do want to put this thing on the water yet. So, but that's a throwaway item. Um, so moving on from the handles, we're going to keep kind of pointing out some of the weak points of this unit. So, you know, the skeg on long tails is made to protect your prop. Um, the backwater skeg is a very, is built to be the right height. So your prop doesn't hit the bottom, but it lets you get close to the bottom because they're made for shallow water. This skag here, what is that? Maybe six inches. So if you are in shallow water, all of a sudden you're not even going to get your prop into the water. Um, but moving on to how cheap and chintzy this kit is built, um, and I'm going to say a definite flaw in it, it's built out of like sheet metal. I'm not that strong, <laughs> guys. <laughs> I'll take and bend that back because I do want to drive it eventually, like I said. Um, so a thing that makes our kits look very similar is the rounded cavitation plate. So cavitation plates, you know, this plate that's over top the prop does make a long tail a lot more efficient. Now, this is something that backwater, you know, has taken a lot of pride in and put a lot of ingenuity into. What's really unique about the backwater plate is it's adjustable. You can change the angle of this plate to match your bow. So that's important because if this angle is too steep, it's gonna dive down deep in the water. If it's too shallow, it's gonna pop up out of the water. So when you get this matching your bolt, it's gonna come right to the surface and run. When you're at the surface of the water, you gain a few things. You gain speed, because you have more straightforward push. You gain ease of handling, because you're right there at the top of the water. You naturally hit less things, because you're running that much shallower. And then when you do hit something, it pops out of the water easy and sets back in. So the way that this backwater cavitation plate, our surface tracer plate, is adjustable is by simply putting shims in between the plate and the brace that's welded on to our drive tube. Um, so that's all that works. In this case, what they did is they made a plate that looks very similar to ours, but they made it adjustable here on this cast. It, I think it should move up and down. You should be able to make it adjustable but the problem is, is it's not gonna work. Because in order for this to work, you need the, to be relatively close to your prop. Um, basically, what this turns into, like I said, I haven't run it yet, but I'm sure it's gonna be that way, is gonna be a weed catching monster. Maybe in open water will be fine, but any weed that comes in here is gonna be caught and trapped, and any weed that comes in here is gonna be caught and trapped. So the point of these motors are to go in shallow water. Skag's not gonna let you. Uh, and in terrain where there's weeds and that sort of thing. This stuff is, you know, that's just gonna catch it all. Backwater, streamlined, it's sealed. You know, it's made to be weedless. Uh, as long as we're on the topic of weeds, we'll talk about the propeller. Um, on this import kit, it comes with an aluminum propeller. Um, first off, I guess on the weeds, is this propeller is not designed in a way to be weedless. Uh, it's going to wrap and catch weeds even on this propeller here. Uh, the backwater prop, uh, they're specifically designed with a negative rake in order to be weedless. Um, next thing is this aluminum prop, it's going to break. Um, I guess maybe it's a shear pin protecting uh, such a weak shaft because this is only a half inch versus like a three quarter inch shaft on here. You can see how thin and narrow this is. Uh, you take a, a good hard hit, it is going to bend there. As long as we're down here talking about this, I just want to point out this has a brass bushing and a seal down here. Um, I guess it's better than nothing, but that's just a, a wear part. It is going to wear out. I will show you the backwater bearing system. So right here, you can see the shaft extends all the way through here. I'm just gonna pull this apart. You 
Inside the bearing housing here, which is also threaded on, there's three sealed bearings held in by a retaining clip. Um, in your bearing housing cap here is where your, your seals ride. There's two of them in there. It's all left-hand thread. So as your engine's running, it's always going to be tightening. That bearing housing cap will never loosen up. Um, now this is where we actually get into our Revel Clean bearing system. This cone shape here is going to funnel water down to your prop or direct water down to your prop. Inside of that bearing housing cap, the cone, there's a half inch area, that flat surface right there, that has a tight tolerance to this three quarter inch drive shaft. What that does is that rides over top our Revel Clean groove. This is a groove that we machine into our drive shaft. See how that moves my thumb out or towards the prop? When this is assembled, that rides th there inside that bearing housing cap. That acts as an auger, augering out sand, weeds, muck, duck cord, fishing line. Anything that's going to get into your bearings or your seals, it's going to push it right on out. Therefore, we've never had a bearing failure. So, I mean, yeah, you can see the, see the difference there. So the overall strength of the backwater is just a whole lot higher. The cavitation plate is not going to bend on you. The skag is not going to bend on you. Um, one thing that you, that you end up doing when you're out with a long tail is, a long tail is a tool. You need to be able to pull around the back end of the boat. You need to be able to grab your handle and literally pull around your boat sometimes. Um, you know, you can do that with this unit. Here, the skag will bend and I, I truly feel with one day of use, of true use, uh, even this whole drive tube would either bend or break right in half. So I showed how this unit has an incredible amount of flex in it. Um, the backwater is designed, you know, the UM2 frame, uh, the way the skag is welded in there, all this adds strength. Um, I don't actually think I can show you any flex in this unit at all. And I'm putting about five times the amount of weight on there. So just to move on from that though, in general, what we've done at Backwater is, you know, we set out to build the best design long tail, the tubular frame, the surface tracer cavitation plate, um, our Revel clean bearing system, the Versamount transom mount, our precision machined aircraft or grade aluminum uh, bell housing. All those things add up to make not only the strongest, but the best performing and most dependable long tail you're gonna be able to buy. That being said, the next thing we gotta do is put a motor on each one of these. I do wanna put this frame on the water show you how it catches weeds, show how the handle bends, just you know, to show all the problems that you have if you try to save the money buying a non-USA made an import kit versus spending a little bit extra money and buying quality made here in the United States of America. So we got this import kit installed on the engine here uh, and I wanna talk about a couple things right before we put it on the water. The first being during assembly, um, this is uh, you know, an engine that you can get here in the States and it has standard threads in the rear crankcase cover. Uh, the kit did not come with the right threads or the right bolts for this for you know, an American engine with standard threads. So we did have to switch those out to, you know, we supplied our own bolts there to get the kit to bolt onto the engine actually. Uh, a couple other things I wanted to point out is on this transom mount. The first being that it's at the wrong angle for the angle of the transom itself. So you'll notice that this is tipped back. Now when you're in this run position, it's not too bad because it does, the pivot point makes up for that. But as you bring it over, you see that it tips the engine. So our Versa mount, will, you can adjust that to be level with your transom on your boat so you won't have that problem. The next thing that we noticed here is it has this rubber bump stop but that actually doesn't work because the bell housing binds 
onto the transom mount before it ever hit that. Uh, so that being said, let's get this thing on the water, see how it runs. So maybe ran two minutes there again since we tightened the handle last and it's very loose already again. So basically I just did a little bit of cattail running and there it's all stuck in. And not gonna come off. To see if I can rev it off. That doesn't work either, so I'm gonna have to, I guess, spin around and get off some weeds. Just as I had suspected, the front of the skag is picking up weeds. And then there's a lot of weeds wrapping around the prop. These bushings are not going to last long with the way this is wrapping around here. All right, well, let's go uh, see how it handles uh, hitting a log. exactly sure what happened yet um, but the prop is no longer turning there is quite a bit of racket coming from this area so I'm not sure if the coupler stripped or if the prop stripped or it's just no longer tight on the tapered shaft um, but either way uh, right now I'm out of commission Either way, so that's what's happened is after a couple of log hits, this is actually pulling out up here, so. All right, two quick notes here. Uh, I'm not wearing a kill switch because this motor did not come with one. Uh, I would always recommend wearing one. All of our backwater units do come with them. Uh, the second note is after just a short amount of runtime, the handles very loose and we've already tightened it up uh, multiple times. Yeah, so just a couple of more hits of the log. And uh, once again, the cavitation plate is totally out of adjustment. And the skag is, well, not really allowing me to drive straight anymore. And I can't really bend it back either. I can, but other stuff is starting to go with it. Pretty much toast. 
unit, you can actually just feel here, see that handle bend, it's just not enough, literally. So, it kind of back into shape. But yeah, this thing is not even what I would consider a day of use just uh, falling apart. So far the drive tube fell out of the bell housing, the skag is bent, the cavitation plate doesn't stay in place, the handle's bent, and yeah, like I said, I haven't even done one full day of use. All right, so we're gonna do one more test to see how it holds up in rocks, see what that aluminum prop does uh, and the non-spline uh, non shaft. Uh, we're gonna put it into some rocks. Now this isn't uh, necessarily what it'd be exactly like out in on, out on the water, but if you were running a rocky river, you know you are gonna take rock strikes, or even you know in the lakes and swamps you'll take a rock or you know hard strike. So we're gonna fire it up and see what happens. One blade left. We're gonna do the same with the backwater motor, see what it does, and I'll even try to be more rough on it. You can see just went through all those weeds and there's nothing caught on there unlike the import kit. Also another couple other features that are real important here. The kill switch, you always want to wear that, it adds a lot of safety to you know when you're out running the boat. And also everything is still nice and tight. The handle hasn't come loose uh, and it's not gonna. You know, the frame isn't falling out of the bell housing. There's just all those things that aren't going to happen when you buy a quality USA made kit. All right, so here we can see 
after doing all those log hits that the skag and prop are still fully intact you know there's not starting to be any bending uh, there's actually you know no sign of wear whatsoever here um, the one thing you that you can see here is a couple of times I was able to lift the prop up out of the water and I could have done that every time I saw the obstacle I could have lifted out up out of the water uh, I wanted to let it hit and I actually was holding it in to hit it very hard just to demonstrate how strong it is but the next thing is when I was running that import kit the handle was so flimsy and the shaft was so long that I could barely even if I wanted to pull it and push it out of the water so I wouldn't take that the log strike I wouldn't have been able to So here I'm going to take and put the backwater uh, prop into the rocks as I did with the import kit. But what I want to demonstrate is how durable the stainless steel prop is as well as the RevoClean bearing system. So there I was digging in way harder and a whole lot more and you can see everything is still perfectly intact. Could you see the sparks flying? Because I could. So in this video, you were able to see all the reasons why to buy a quality built in USA backwater kit versus an import. From everyone at Backwater, we'd like to thank you for watching this video. Remember to be safe, be courteous, and enjoy the great outdoors.